We have about psychology. This time about players who are better against their position. How to stop losing against lower level players. It's a very common request, which people are always asking in my coaching programs. When in practice, I play well, but I went against the lower players, you know, I very often lose. I lose my focus. I lose belief in myself. And the, the short answer is there is obvious reasons. Why is that happening? And I'm going to explain you why. So the first thing what makes lose to lower level players is that you have a very high expectations about performance. Basically, you are telling to the person that he is not good compared to you and you stop focusing to the game. I'm going to repeat. You stop focusing to the game because you have expectations that by default, you need to be this player. Not the best attitude because I'm going to show you soon why is it. So let me put camera to the place. So, you know, you play the game and for example, when you play against a player who is lower than you, the first thing what drops is your concentration. So for example, you know that the player on that situation could score maximum 20, 30 points and you're a hundred break player. So you start to play the game carelessly. When your tempo is medium tempo, you start to play like very carelessly, just like, you know, you don't care about anything and you just start to do simple mistakes. And let's say you start losing 1-0, 2-0, and you're playing best of five. And when you have 2-0, you're losing to the opponents, then the pressure raise up because how you can lose to, uh, to that kind of player. And then you start to think about what other people going to think about you, what you are thinking about yourself, what people are going to think about in social media that you lost against that player. You know, those thoughts are not related to the game. When you play your snooker at the best level, you only think about the game, how to pot balls. and how to make position for the next shot. You don't think about that opponent is going to punish you. You don't think about that opponent is lesser or better than you. You just only think about the game. And when you have expectation that by default, by doing nothing, you're going to be that player, you're putting yourself to the bad mental state. And you start, you start doing correct things. You start doing safety shots. Often I see the players, let's say they play against lesser player, they know their objective level, and they start to play shots in tournament play like this, you know, the cubo is there. And they are so, you know, underrated. So for example, that that right is blocked, so they play shot like this. Then they are leaving to the opponent easy chances. And maybe the opponent have a good day and they can start to score 20 to break, make a safety. And then you, you are careless again and they score again 20 and then you're losing 1-0 or 2-0. And that's very important. You have to be at the present moment, no matter what kind of opponent you have. You have a better player or lesser player. Especially if this is the first game in the in day and you want to warm up, you just have to start a little bit more careful. And then uh, when your confidence builds and you see your opponent's state of game, you can change your style accordingly, but you have to be mindful on what are you doing. Now, second thing, what could cause a loss against a lower 
level player is your preparation. Very often I see that the players who are better level are not doing correct practices. You know, they just, you know, coming to the club and they just play without any purpose practice. You know, they just play shots random, just spotting balls. They just spotting balls without plan and they coming into the tournament without the form. And what happens when you are not in form, you don't feel confident. And when you don't feel confident, you feel more pressure. And when you feel pressure, you play way less than your actual level. So if you want to play consistent and win against lesser players, you have to play in su- you have to train in such a way that you could maintain consistency throughout the whole tournament. Set your training into the three sections. Technique, knowledge about the game, and concentration. If you could divide attention to the three major aspects and have a challenging goals, not too boring and not too hard, you're going to be on form. And you're going to play the game well. And it's going to be very unlikely that you're going to lose against a lesser level players. The first thing what you need to focus on is that you have to have, you have to play in such a way that you play against Ronio or Sullivan. So you know that, for example, there's a very good drill. You set up an open table layout, you know, something like that. And, you know, you pick up Kubo ball in hand. And your goal to win against the match, Ronald Sullivan, is to score at least 70, 80 points. Basically, it means frame-winning break. If you score more than 70 points, you're winning against that player. When you score less than 70 points, you're losing. If you cannot score 70, 80 points, and you, have, and you play against, like, a 30-break player, then you have to score 30 points to win the frame. So you could set the goal regarding what kind of opponent you play. If your opponent is scoring 30 points, you set up a 30 break standard. And then if you beat, you know that in the match situation, you're more likely to be focused and score heavy. So you can practice realistic situations like this, you know, set up, you know, to more easy position, start practicing like that. And from this position, you you know, you try to score 30 points or more or 50 points or more, depending on what kind of goal you have. Something like this. And then it's, I guess, you know, it's a better practice than a lineup because you're getting a more much like situations. And because of that, when you go into the tournament, you are more much like prepared. When you do a lineup, I mean, if you are 50 plus, 60 break plus player, the lineup, it's a pretty easy exercise. You're going to score 70, 80 points pretty easily. But in the real game situations, especially if you set a goal, let's say you play in best of seven, each time you score more than 30, you win a frame. If you score less than 30 points, you lose the frame. And that's what I give to my students who want to improve their tournament performance. I give a, this specific exercise is to play a random match against yourself, Ghost, and try to win according to the level. So that's what you can do to prepare for the tournament, is to play against, like, in your mind against lesser players and see how your mind reacts to the situation and how much you can beat those opponents realistically. Okay, I said, hi everyone, somehow is there to become my friend. Peter Sidorenko, thanks mates. I really try to improve players game. Okay, the first thing. So, um, actually there is some group of people who, despite that they are playing against a lower level player, they feel pressure. And the reason is that fear of loss. When you are fearful 
and you think, oh my God, if I'm going to lose against that player, what other people is going to think about my performance or what I'm going to feel? And usually they are afraid of feeling bad about themselves, that they are not going to be at the moment, you're going to be stressful, you're going to be angry, frustrated. That's what people don't want to feel. Because when you play against equal player or better player, after the loss, I rarely see that much frustration like a better player losing against lesser player because not only think how I could lose against lesser level player, but you know, other conse external consequences like what parents gonna say about them, what friends gonna say about them, you know. So remember guys, you have to only focus on yourself. It's a selfish approach, but as a player, you know, you have to be selfish. You know, you just have to think what best I could do for my game to improve my performance and why I should care about other players level if I play with the table. So every time you come to the table, stop focusing on opponent good or bad performance, focus on yourself. And you are the best judge, you know, if you do a silly mistake and the opponent does a silly mistake again, you, it shouldn't bother you. You just have to play with the table. Of course, it's easier than done because there is lots of factors what controlling your mind. But basically, you have to focus on things which you can control and you can control your behavior. If you do a mistake, say to yourself, focus at the moment what best you can do to you know score as heavy as possible and how to put your trouble into trouble because when you are playing as lesser player and you're not focused i said oh doesn't matter he's not gonna score 20 30 points oh doesn't matter he's not good long potter oh you know i can attack everything and it's not gonna happen that's a bad state you cannot do that because first of all your concentration levels are dropping below base level second you are doing harm for your game. So if you're a reasonable human being and you play in the serious tournament, just act rationally. And actually, uh, despite you, nobody cares about your performance except your family. You have to play for yourself, nobody else. And when you are complaining, oh, that player, you know, is playing a negative game because he's less than me, you are you know, <laughs> shaming other player, but actually you're shaming yourself because, you know, it's your fault that you didn't perform good. You had a chance to play better, but you decided to play worse because you couldn't put your mental state, stay to the correct position. And when my opponent says, oh, that guy cannot make 10, I said, listen, mate, that's a challenge. You have to try to be more focused on that because he's improving your capacity to be at the moment. When you play against the same level or upper level players, of course, your focus is going to be bigger because you know that you have to try. It's just more like, easy. It's, it's a little bit easier to focus for the player who is lesser level than for the better level because it's like a challenge. And when you play against lesser players, it's no challenge. And that's why you artificially have to try to raise up. So, you know, once again, set like even if you do drills simple drills like lineup if you do a, if you want to do a lineup just try to you know either beat your record let's say if your record is you know 90 points so you try to score 90 91 or plus that's gonna put your mind to the challenge state or play the match as i said with yourself best of five best of seven or best of three, it depends what kind of challenge you want to make. And you can count average if you say you, you, you play best of seven, you set yourself, score the more 30 points, and you mark the, all the scores, and you see that your average score is 60. So, of course, you can start to play against 60 break standard, something like that. Because, guys, it's really important that your preparation for the tournament would be good. If you prepare good, your mental state automatically is going to be good and it's very unlikely that you're going to lose against lesser player. Anyways. Okay, so far, no questions.
15 people are watching. I want to say thank you for you all who are supporting the channel. I do my best to provide the content which is actually useful for the player who wants to be not only technically strong, but also mentally strong. So if you are the guy who wants to improve the game, please press the link below where it's gonna get where you're gonna get a consultation for free with me. And also you can send me a video. I'm gonna send you PDF instructions and I'm gonna analyze your video so I could share the feedback, what's actually going on in your game. It doesn't really matter if you're beginner, intermediate or advanced player. Okay, so. Um, we talked about that it really doesn't matter if you play against lesser player or good player. You have to play with the same attitude and everything starts with the practice. If you practice correctly, you're likely to win against less a level player. If you practice with chaos, you have more chance to lose against player and don't perform your best level. So um, guys, I'm waiting for your questions. If you have any and kindly, I'm gonna answer them. Okay, so far, no questions. So remember, two high expectations put into the stressful position. At the beginning is boredom because you think that you can easily beat the player. And if you're losing, then the stress kicks in because for boredom, it's very easy to get to the stressful situation because you're not focused and somebody pushes you and then you start to think about external things like what other people or you thinking about your game and what, kind, and what is gonna happen if you're gonna lose. The opposite is better. When you are focused and somebody pushes you to the limit, let's say they winning to zero, you are more likely to get back to the game easier than those who get panicked. Then practice with the purpose, set yourself goals to beat a certain level player, let's say, you are, I don't know, an 80, 90 break player and you play against 30 break player, you set a routine where you need to beat a 30 break player and artificially you are creating an exercise, simulating exercise for the tournament and you are more likely to perform better than in general. So you do a realistic drill, set up a position always random and try to score on open table as much as you can or as much as needed to win the frame. And then, yeah, your, your, I set everything, preparation, expectations, and set, and just make sure that it doesn't really matter you play against good player or bad player. You always play it with the same style, with the same attitude, because that actually helps you to keep the good form and play better snooker than usually. And you actually respect yourself and your opponent. And in that regard, you are becoming a better player. And yes, I mentioned stop complaining at any time. If you play against lesser player and you lose, it's your fault. It's not his fault, it's your fault. And you have to take full ownership for your mistakes. You know, imagine Stephen Henry doing that. You know, he, if he complained about something, he never become a, one of the best players in the whole history. Ronnie took himself to his hands work with the psychologist and you can see his overall performance improve massively and you can do as well with the small steps anyways so i got a question from colin thank you colin do you have any tips to help deal with anxiety while i was playing i sometimes lose games for no other reason than i'm anxious despite knowing i can beat the other player fantastic question colin yes uh, I can tell from my experience that you feel anxiety because you say words to yourself. I must, I should, I need to prove something to myself or any, anybody. You know, you feel anxiety. What would happen if I'm going to lose against lesser player? 
and those thought patterns in your mind making your muscles tense and it's making you thinking negatively, which is a consequence is destroying your confidence and you cannot play. So that's the reason. Now, what to do with that? So there are a few techniques you can do mentally at the moment when you play to change the state. This is your breathing. So to be, when you're at the present moment, you cannot feel big pressure. So you, your task is to focus at something specific. Oh my God, if I, you feel that I'm, how I playing bad or how the opponent plays, you focus, okay. I decide the simplest uh, technique is just focus on breathing when you are sitting. Focus on the breathing, tempo and rhythm. Then you can focus on the sound or you can focus on smells, whatever, like you just artificially focusing on something specific. And you will notice that when you're gonna focus on something specific, your mind is gonna be much less anxious. If that is not enough, you can focus on uh, squeezing and relaxing your muscles. For example, if you feel that your back arm is tense, you squeeze your grip tight as much as you can, so you are putting even more pressure on that. And when you're relaxing, you actually feel relaxation and you feel, feel way more relaxed than anxious. That's a well-documented and improving science techniques on mindfulness and, you know, just overall relaxation. And if you're going to do that, you're going to relax. And also the most simple one, just always have a fresh bottle of water, put next to yourself and drink plenty of them. Why? Because the more water you drink, the more oxygen flow you're going to get to the brain and the more oxygen flow you're going to get to the brain, you're just going to feel way more energetic and less anxious. Anxiety is like your blood pressure is raising up. And when the blood pressure is raising up, it's not good. And when you drink water, it's putting your blood pressure less and then you feel less anxiety. So everything that is a chemical is in your body affecting your performance. I hope that helps. Okay, uh, we have still 10 people. People are enjoying action calling. It's a fantastic question you asked. Many people have dealing with the anxiety big time, you know, and, and that is, you know, that is techniques what you can do on the table. And there are techniques as a homework, what you need to do off the table to train your mind. And that's what I do in the course, how to raise the form and your level. Uh, we're going to have a release on uh, somewhere in, mid in the middle of July. And those guys who want to actually improve match play performance is going to get uh, information and practical tips with my guidance to help you out to have, become a better match player. So wait for that program. And for those who are interested in improving that regard, you can always PM me and I can always... Uh, share more information about that topic. And, you know, that's what I do with my old students, no matter they are 10 years old or 50 years old and they have questions about that. I try by the coaching questions, understand the issue and give them the best solutions for the, you know, their request. Because everybody on that regard is a little bit different, but there are some principles which are universal for anyone. And there are some specific ways what triggers them on the good way and bad way. But good way and bad way, yeah. So, yes, great advice. Thank you. Thank you, Colin, for asking a wonderful question. That's good. Guys, listen, there are some people who are watching. Listen, don't be shy. Ask the question. The more you ask the questions, the better you learn and also you provide value for others and, uh, you know, is making the conversation way more fun, way more insightful. So please, I'm just giving you a one, two minutes and if, it's the, if, the, if there are not going to be any more questions, then we're going to finish the stream. 
So maybe I'm going to share my personal story. Uh, this year, I started to work a lot on the mental state because I think to have a proper mindset is actually helping you to improve your technique. If you are the person who is over analytical and over negative, if something bad happens, it's really difficult to work on something like what is very specific, like technique, because it requires concentration. So first goal, I believe truly that you, we need to improve, the coach needs to improve the player's ability to focus and stay at the moment. Because if that happens, it is way more pleasant and easier way for the player to improve skills and actually learn the game. Because snooker by itself is not an easy game. There is lots of techniques. And if your mind is not working properly, you know, it's a very difficult game to learn, especially at the adulthood. Because children, until, let's say, 15, 16 years old, they, they have more freedom in their thinking and they don't overthink, despite the fact that they have less experience. And because of the neural pathways, you know, they learning skills faster. And since the adult, adulthood ch uh, starts, uh, the mind thinking changes, chemistry changes, and snooker coaching for the adults is a little bit different compared to the children. And when I work with the children and when we work with the adults, it's a different approach. And um, if you are struggling with, to, for the long term to improve your game, I can give you strategies to improve that and make that approach more pleasant, more fun, and actually gain long-term skills, which I'm always looking for, for the player, because that's, you know, a more healthy way to train yourself. Okay, guys, that's it. Uh, nobody asked the question. Hope you enjoy the stream and in the comment section after this video, just ask questions and let me know. Okay, guys, enjoy.